Memphis Wilcox and the Muddy Mountain Man with his tune Head My Ass Back Home. Before that, we heard Backwoods Beaver by Plum Tard, and we kicked it all off with a live version of Go Home by Sugarline Blue. All three of those cats were playing the Airways Music Festival. I feel like today's show is going to be a big highlight of what you missed. Uh, but then again, I don't have all the tunes yet on uh, uh, you know, a disc, so we'll probably play some other stuff. Unless we can come up with... Oh, yeah, we were going to do the, the puppets uh, oral fixation thing, but oh, well, I, I don't feel like going to get them. Good. Yeah, this is where we need an intern. Go fetch the puppets. You know, we got an intern for the photography company now. Shouldn't do shit. Yeah, I know that. Well, you don't know what to tell her to do. That's not true. I know exactly what to tell her to do, but she won't do it. Really? Yeah, she's supposed to go to the festival and uh, photo document and all. You know, because she, she gets hours and they transfer to college for you know all this, basically, intern hours or whatever. And they have to get so many... And it would have been huge. She would have got, you know, half her hours off this one festival. And she She's like, I can't do it. I'm like, it's like my teacher said it wouldn't count. I'm like, that's bullshit because you're our intern. You're working for us. So I know she's lying just to not come do stuff. So I really don't want to invite her back. But what we like to do now is when we have to work, we have the intern come. We have her hold the kid. So <laughs> we basically get free babysitter. Well, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I'm like, man, we we could really teach her some stuff, but I don't know. And then we got this other stupid employee, the one that's like up there. Mm-hmm. Always on a damn cell phone. Okay. Yeah. I mean, damn kids today. This is our problem with hiring like 18 to 20 year old girls. Actually, our best employees. Like wait, our, wait, wait, wait. Everybody is on their cell phone all the time. Yeah, but with them, like I can't No, because I have this. We have this other employee that's younger and we can say, hey. You know, don't get on your phone. She doesn't get on her phone. She does everything. She's actually better than all the rest. It's like she's already learned how to set up the camera and actually use it and everything. She understands where, you know, our shutter speed or F-stop needs to be, you know, our ISO settings. She she gets it. These other people are a bunch of 
dumb sticks. Well. But because they're always doing this. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, nothing. Um, because I'm trying to step out of that company. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I need I need all of them there so I can get out of it. <laughs> I want to do more, uh, you know, of this and festivals and stuff. I don't know. I don't want to be taking pictures. I don't make any money from it. The wife keeps all that money. Oh, well. Absolutely yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. I don't I because... don't see a dollar of it. I just I tell her that it is like, yo, I need you to transfer some of that money to this account because it went from the festival, it went way under, you know, way in the red. I was like, I need you to just hit zero. So all these penalties quit hitting us. And she said no? No, oh, she'll do it. She just hadn't done it yet. We got the we got shoot a wedding this weekend. This wedding was originally gonna be five hours, now we're gonna be there for twelve. I kept adding time. I was like, damn it, this pisses me off because I had shit to do and now I gotta go be at the stupid wedding the whole time. Mm. It sucks because I also have a party going on out here, so now I, I've got to pay a lifeguard to be here because I can't be here, which is going to completely negate all the money we were going to get. So it's kind of like, I it's like I could almost just close that damn thing down because it's costing more to run it and pay somebody to be here. Since I have to go do this stupid shit. When I could just really be right here in the studio the whole time recording music and making radio shows and be doing just fine. That sounds infinitely preferable to me. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, well, I want to take the the four bay and I want to build a huge big studio out of it. You know, put a bathroom in it and like a little guest room. But I need about 50 grand. Dink, can I have 50 grand? Uh, sure. I'll name the studio after you. Uh, okay. And I don't want to call you the Rocket anymore. I think you should just be Rocket. Okay. What do you do? You, do you think it sounds better than yeah. the Rocket? I think yeah. Rocket does sound better. Like it just as a name, a nickname. I think Rockets. I'm just gonna call you Rocket instead of the Rocket. And say, uh, you know, hey, you're kicking it with. I'm Josh, and with me as always is the Rocket. It's gonna be with me as always is Rocket. Because then it's more like a name. The Rocket, you know, to me, it's, I don't know. It takes away from it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Rocket. Yeah. 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 And then people can, you know, depend on what you're doing. If you're really horny, you're Red Rocket. If you're sleepy, you know, you're Limp Rocket. <laughs> if you're fighting, you're, you know, Explosive Rocket. <laughs> well, those days are pretty well past me, but. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Work, damn it. <laughs> Smacking it. Uh, I saw that picture of you and that lady at the festival <laughs> all hugged up on you. She, oh. What would your wife think of that? She was she was one of uh, Jam and Joe's ladies. Mm-hmm. And she was about to collapse in the middle of those people. Yeah, and she's like, hey, Rocket, come here. Why do they call you Rocket? Show me. And I managed I managed to get her out of the middle of the traffic, onto the porch, and I said, I'll be right back, and then I left. <laughs> mm-hmm. I bet. You disappeared for three minutes. I know what you were doing. For three <laughs> minutes? Oh. <laughs> hmm. Tums, man. I could just eat Tums all day. Are you experiencing problems? Oh, dude, anytime I eat, my stomach feels like I'm, I'm getting sick. And it's from all the stress I've been under lately, though. You need mm. to de-stress a little bit. Well, no, I mean, now that we're before out... Before those uh, turn into ulcers. Well, no, I've had ulcers. I have ulcers. Like, once you get them, they never go away, really, but... Oh, you you, you do? Yeah. Uh, okay, my dad had them. Mm-hmm, they suck. I had them come up in my throat before. Uh. Yeah, I, that really sucked when I was running hotels. Like, I was under stress all the time. They're in my stomach, in my throat. I went to the doctor. They had to give me all kinds of coating crap. And then I found goat milk. I actually soothed it better than anything. Better than any of the medicine. Yeah. I mean, when the kids were little, um, they were, we were all determined to be highly allergic to all kinds of stuff. And we fed them goat milk. That seemed to be fine. Your damn kids. You know who I didn't? I didn't get to kick it with Rob that much at the festival. I know that's too bad. Yeah, well, I didn't get to kick it with anybody really. I was kind of, 
That was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Uh-huh. <laughs> you see me? I was like running this way, turn around, running back, <laughs> just back and forth, back and forth. Well, uh, some of it was your nerves, but nonetheless. No, no, no. A lot of it was like I kept getting of it was... messages like, we need you up here at the gate. And then I get a message, we need you down here at the stage. Right. And it was like, oh, shit. Because then I had to go down and like, there was a problem with the sound or the setup. And then I'm up here and there's a problem with like somebody registering and and it's like I delegated all that work. Like John had the stage, you know. My girls had re- like I had it set to where I was kind of just overseeing the people and the groups. But it never works that way. Like, no. Next one will be a little better though because we're through it. And I think you know if I can get these same people back to work the next event, they're going to feel a little more confident in what to do. And not only that, I'm going to take a little more time up front, like to, instead of hey, this is what you do, kind of go through it. I mean, it was very lame, and I mean anybody could have figured it out. It wouldn't much. It said, give me some money. That's basically it. It's like, I don't care. Get their email, their name, their phone number, and some money. That's that's it. That's all we need. And if they give you some money, give them this little gift. So I got a lot of those little gifts back. <laughs> I, I need to make sure you get a little gift. <laughs> but, but that can actually be a lot harder than it seems. No. To somebody doing it on the... Well, yeah, for them. You know, I got up there. I I, I showed them how to do it. And, like, they weren't getting anything, so I go in there and do it. Like, of course, I'm really good at upselling and talking to people. Like, I was, when I was up there showing right. them, I was getting 20 bombs dropped in there. You know, it was awesome. When I opened the thing, stuff is like one, 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 one. I was like, what the hell happened to all the 20s? <laughs> they go, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and, like, I was honestly, I was like, just show some boob. I was like, you guys are dressed like sluts anyhow. Just lean over and, like, flirt a little bit. And that's not me being sexist or anything, but, I mean... All those guys that came in, I mean, they were they're pretty girls working the thing. It's like just flirt with them, and you can get the, you'll get some money, and they'll probably even buy you some drinks and stuff. It's like the 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 thing with the bar. I don't think I, I was really surprised about their lack of understanding of the way things work in a place where you can't sell beer. It was all for donations. Like they right. Had, yeah. Well, actually, you know, we found out who tried to shut us down. Who was it? The mayor. The mayor? The mayor tried to shut us down. Um, and lucky, uh, Steve is a good friend with all the cops. The cop, you know, after they, they researched it and found out, hey, what we're doing is completely legal and there's nothing wrong with it. Now, he's just mad because, first, uh, we weren't even in his town. We're right outside of his town. But because we were able to take donations for this, people weren't going to his town to buy the stuff. And he's like, we're going to get tax money. I'm like, you're not going to get it either way. I mean, all the people that come from out of town are camping over and staying out. And the ones that aren't are just going home. So I'm kind of like, you know, you're just picking a fight. You're not going to win. And for one, lucky for me, family of attorneys, I knew we were good and in the clear. (laughs) So, uh, uh, but yeah, no, I'm pissed off. I know Steve. 